It's my great honor today to introduce to you one of the greatest thinkers of our age, Herbert Marcuse. Herbert Marcuse is a very modest man. He really doesn't believe he's very important at all, but I think every word he's written, I won't go through the catalogues of his uh, works, Eros and Civilization, One Dimensional Man, disproves uh, the modesty that he protests. I think every sentence he utters today will also uh, disprove that. I'd like to introduce to you Herbert Marcuse. I'm happy to see so many flowers here, and that is why I want to remind you that flowers by themselves have no power whatsoever other than the power of men and women who protect them and take care of them against aggression and destruction. As a hopeless philosopher, for whom philosophy has become inseparable from politics, I'm afraid I have to give here today a rather philosophical speech and I must ask your indulgence for it. We are dealing with the dialectic of liberation. Actually redundant because I believe that all dialectic is liberation and not only liberation in an intellectual sense but liberation involving the mind and the body, liberation involving the entire human existence. Think of Plato, the liberation from the existence in the cave. Think of Hegel, liberation in the sense of progress and freedom on a historical scale. Think of Marx. Now, in what sense is uh, all dialectic in the liberation? It is liberation from a repressive, from a bad, from a false system. Be it an organic system, be it a social system, being a mental or intellectual system. Liberation by forces developing within such a system. That is a decisive point. And liberation by virtue of the contradictions generated by the system, precisely because it is a bad, a false system. I'm using intentionally here moral, philosophical terms, values, bad, false. For without the objectively justifiable goal of a better, a free human existence, all liberation must remain meaningless, at best progress in servitude. And even that I admit is worth fighting for. Now as to today and our own situation, I think we are faced with a novel situation in history because today we have to be liberated from a relatively well-functioning, rich, powerful society I'm speaking here, and my main topic, as you know, is liberation from the affluent societies, that is to say the advanced industrial societies. We are facing the problem, we are facing the need for liberation, not from a poor society, not from a disintegrating society, not even in most cases from a terroristic society, but from a society which develops uh, to a great extent the material and uh, even cultural needs of man, from a 
society to use a slogan which delivers the goods to an ever larger part of the population. And that is, that implies we are facing liberation from a society where liberation is apparently without a mass basis. We know very well the social mechanisms of manipulation, indoctrination, repression, which are responsible for this lack of a mass basis, which are responsible for the integration of the majority of the oppositional forces into the established social system. What I have to emphasize again, that this is mere, not merely an ideological integration, that it is not merely a surface integration, that it takes place precisely on the strong and rich basis which enables the society to develop and satisfy material and cultural needs better than before. Now the knowledge of the mechanisms of manipulation, of repression, which goes down into the very unconscious of man, that is not the whole story. We can formulate this dialectic of liberation also in a more brutal way as a vicious circle. The transition from voluntary servitude, as it exists to a great extent in the affluent society, to freedom presupposes the abolition of the institutions and mechanisms of suppression and the abolition of the institutions and mechanisms of suppression already presupposes liberation from servitude, prevalence of the need for liberation. I think we have to distinguish between the need for changing intolerable conditions of existence and the need for changing the society as a whole. The two are by no means identical and are by no means in common. Quantitative change, if the need is for changing intolerable conditions of existence, with at least a reasonable chance that this can be achieved within the established society, with the growth and the progress of the established society. Quantitative change.